Hey folks, we'll begin this Quake Watch crossing November into December with an explanation of them. The purpose of this video is to clarify the criterion for Quake Watches, the objective versus subjective parts, and to take a look at the results since I began using this formula. This is not for some science journal, nor a patent, it will never see peer review, any university, commercial entity, or government. This isn't for nothing other than you suspicious observers out there, and for those of you who are going to comment about Patrick Gerald, Solar Watcher, or DC Symbols. I have shown you all the books we've used to create this formula, some published before we were born, most based on the work of older sources. None of us are prophets. None of us owns this science. We are all using an ancient system, and this hero worship I see of those men, and a little bit of myself, is wholly inappropriate counterintuitive to being awake and needs to stop immediately. Okay then, this is my quake chart. You can see there is a column for significant earthquakes according to the USGS, plus ones they've inexplicably left off like six pointers in Indonesia and the west coast subduction zone of South America. You should be familiar with our planetary conjunctions and oppositions, geocentrically for quakes, like Venus and Saturn to start this quake watch and the Mercury-Jupiter opposition to come mid-December. I also give a planetary score, with subjective variables like multiple alignments, the gas giants or the sun involved factoring into a higher score. The most subjective aspect of this is the coronal hole score. Using SDOAIA193, the bigger, closer to equator, and closer to earth facing, the higher the score. This is obviously very low, while this one is one of the highest scores I gave hitting all three categories. This one is in the middle. I also have the 24 hour max KP index from the spaceweather.com time machine, minus 3 with a base of 0 to discount against other factors, again, subjectively. Add these scores to make the quake index. On the far right is the quake score for that day based on the actual significant quake events and magnitude, and then a discounted quake prediction index by half for aesthetic chart making without losing relative correlation. I will note, I let the devil's advocate beat me up here. Let's say I had a 5 day quake watch and there was a 7 pointer and 2 6 pointers on the middle day. My charts take that as 1 day of correlation and 4 days of failure, just so nobody can say a word about rigging the numbers. Now believe it or not, that still doesn't kill the correlation, although it does chop it from 70% down to 40%, but with p-values at 10 to the negative 20, even the conservative correlation is nearly certain. Now correlation strength ranges from negative 1 or 100% negative correlation to 1 or 100% positive correlation. 0 is no correlation whatsoever. So my conservative 40% is a moderate correlation. If you like 0 to 100 scales, that would be an 80% score. The p-value is the chances that this result is a random chance with zero being no chance of error, which is impossible, to one, and sometimes higher with certain tests, being high chance of randomness or error. Now 0 0.01 is considered good, 0 0.005 is better, and 0 0.001 is considered the standard. The p-value we have today has 20 zeros after the decimal. Here we are, every day of 2012 to now. Quake index in red, actual quakes in blue. It is clear that the correlation is not absolute, now you will see perfectly matching spikes more than you'd expect from random samples, but the most noticeable correlations when you look generally at the trending quake index highs and lows versus the actual quake highs and lows. Moderate scores actually have the mean quake occurrence but oddly are evenly distributed above and below the mean. Here we just see the isolated planetary score versus the actual quake score. The coronal hole score looks very similar, actually they all do. The highest C value was with combining them all. Now here's another version of that planetary score graph with some blue missing at the end. That's because we're looking a bit into the future. Here we are entering another watch. Now while we can't look ahead and no coronal hole activity, we can speculate about the KP index. Here we see the heliocentric alignments for the year's end alongside these geocentric ones. Now most of you know how this works heliocentrically for flares, indicating possible times of high KP index. So although the very peak geomagnetic disturbance sees little quaking, it's elevated otherwise during those heliocentric watches. So that looks like it could match this quake watch and the one we have expected near the end of December. Now I can't stress enough how little credit quake forecasters deserve for simply continuing an ancient practice. Anyone can do this. You don't need me or anyone else to do it for you. The links you need to track my variables are below. 
The quake watch is on. Flares may not be far behind. Be safe, everyone.